sounds like a better ring this time. Yeah, that's the correct number. Hello? Hey, Victor, how you doing? It's Charles and, Fr and Gerald. Good, how are you? Good. Um, Gerald didn't have uh, the ability to call you, so he asked me if I would uh, call you through Skype and connect you two together. So. Sure. Okay. Yes, uh, um, I'm pleased to meet you, Vic. I've listened to a lot of, lot of your um, uh, recordings and uh, gained a lot of insights from uh, ideas that you had uh, been developing. Um, uh, Charlie had mentioned that uh, you wanted to talk to Frank and I. Frank is on another call right now, and he said he'd be about uh, 10 minutes, so maybe in about another 8 minutes or so he would be available. Sure. <clears throat> And what um, what things did you want to talk about? Well, I was just actually I was curious to meet up with you. Uh, where about are you in Ontario? Where are you? In oh, I'm I'm in I'm in Alberta. Oh, you are Alberta. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you're in Ontario. Where back you were. And Frank is in Australia, and I can never remember which city he's in. I think it's Sydney. I always say it's Melbourne, but I think it's Sydney. He's in. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, same Somewhere on the globe. same time zone. Anyway, down under. Right, and you're uh, you're involved in that one heaven thing, right? Well, um, a, a, yes, um, quite a few people in, involved in it. Um, uh, Frank and I um, originally our conversations were about a, ancient history, <laughs> and uh, he's he'd been working on this uh, Eucadian model for a long time in his life, and uh, anyway, uh, we got into discussing various elements and uh, actually the point he he'd studied a lot of uh, very ancient law and a lot of religious yes, law and uh, I had studied stuff that was more contemporary and uh, you know when we were first um, discussing you know legal things he was still uh, he didn't really know about the straw man uh, type of stuff eh? And any, anyway, his um, he's got uh, uh, an unbelievable learning curve, and and uh, he is right up to speed on on the way the law things works. And because of his <clears throat> his study of um, uh, ecclesiastical law, uh, as well as um, uh, other ancient law, that the the things dovetail together. Eh? It's kind of like, yes. <clears throat> uh, you know, you're studying one thing, Charlie's studying another, and I'm studying another. When we start talking together, um, uh, we start putting together a bigger picture, eh? Uh, Charlie, yep. um, yeah. Frank is calling me right now. Would you uh, add him to your conversation? W we'll do. Okay. Continue uh, talking. Yes. Just um, one sec. I'm just going to tell Frank that he's going to get pulled in uh, from uh, another angle here. Okay. Just one sec. Yep. Uh, where is he at? And um, <clears throat> things, the insights of how the system works ha have been uh, coming in at an unbelievable pace in the last three weeks uh, or so. Yeah, I think that's going to grow exponentially as more of us wake up and start asking questions. The answer is coming. Well, yes. Um, it, you know, like you you had dug into the birth certificate aspect. There's, there's yes, a, sure have. There's about five, five more different things to the birth certificate that we've discovered, and um, and exactly, you see, the whole thing is about jurisdiction, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. And so, um, in order to uh, counter some jurisdiction over top of us, we have to figure out wh who's got the jurisdiction and how they got it, right? Correct. And so there's there's a bunch of different levels to this, and, and you know how law works. They they start with one one uh, act or law, and then it evolves into another one and another one and another one. Yeah. And so there's a progression, <clears throat> and uh, there's uh, um, you know like well when you take it up to right to the present times, you know the word enforcement in England. Uh, it it says in their 
their laws, you know, visible laws that says the judgments have the power of enforcement. And if you read the United Nations Charter, <clears throat> and when you get into the enforcement section, uh, it, it, it reads like United Nations has the power to use military forces to enforce things on the planet. Well, enforcement starts at a low Gerald. level, doesn't it? Gerald. Yes. yes? Excuse me, I'm going to have to uh, disrupt this call and start it over, so I'm doing it now. Uh, why can't you, Adam? He's in. He looks like he's in, Charlie. Yeah. So it's not disrupted. Uh, oh. Frank, are you right. in? You're in? Fine. Frank. Frank, um, uh, Victor Beck from Canada wanted to talk to us, and Char Charlie has patched us together on a phone call. Vic is on the line in Ontario. Very cool, Frank. And I, I, was, I was just uh, explaining, um, you know, things about uh, jurisdiction and that, uh, you know, in the last three weeks or so, a lot more insights have been coming in as to how the, uh, how the system gets their jurisdiction over us and how it works. Um, yes. And some some of it we haven't uh, we haven't got into discussing with the whole group because it's really uh, really quite new. Um, uh, but um, in in any event, <clears throat> yeah, for if the system has jurisdiction over us, and they do have um, a, um, um, a a lineage of jurisdiction going back a long long time. Uh, so they do have jurisdiction. Uh, we have to uh, zero in on it. And we have to counter it. So that's what we're trying to do with uh, uh, a few different documents uh, right now. And Frank is, is sure. working on some uh, the canon law of one heaven, which is a very yeah. important part of it. And um, <clears throat> the other thing that has is, is, uh, come to the top of our pile recently, do you, Vic, do you remember what color summonses used to be? Uh, nope, but they're yellow right now. They're yellow, eh? You're Interesting. Not You're not well, they, al they always used to be blue, and uh, the Sunday laws were called blue laws. And um, anyway, blue is an ecclesiastical color. And that's why you see blue on all the police forces and whatever. Very interesting to note that they're coming on yellow paper now, and that's another color that we would expect. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Maybe, maybe uh, Frank, you could uh, explain to Vic uh, a little bit more of what we're doing, or maybe you have some direct question you wanted to ask Vic. Might be better. Yeah, I mean, Vic, well, um, do you want do you want a, 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 an update from what Gerald's saying first, or do you want to get straight into questions you've got or comments? How'd you like to go? Are you, sorry, are you talking to me, Vic? Yeah, do you, do you want me to give some background as to adding to what Gerald said, or, or do you want to get straight into some questions? What, what would suit you? Uh, maybe, yeah, sure, maybe get into a little bit more where uh, he's coming from. Um, I did read your uh, quite a bit of your website, although uh, there's a lot more to go. There's the information on your website there, and um, I understood the uh, <clears throat> the air thing, if you will, by going back in your family lin lineage long before other families existed kind of thing, and, you know, the air and succession thing through that uh, approach. And, uh, so I understood all of that, and um, I think I got a pretty good idea on where you where you would like this thing to go, or where you're taking it. And um, <clears throat> you got my support in that. And I, I got to say, when I was, I was rather shocked when I read the information there because it's uh, extremely well drafted. <laughs> it's not your typical uh, information on that website. Well, uh, one thing I've said to Frank: it's a good thing the system doesn't have him as a prosecutor. Or we'd have all been microchipped <laughs> a lot. We'd have, been, we'd have been microchipped 20 years ago. <laughs> 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 That's right. Yes. Well, let me thank you very much for that. And, and let me just add, uh, the most difficult thing to, to, to anybody that comes to it first off, um, more so if they're, they're less floor read, slightly less so if they're more well read, and that is that um, the exact underlying motive for these things is extremely difficult. Uh, and there's a reason for that. There's two reasons for that. One is... Um, I, I, one of the things I used to have as a kid was I was fascinated in war and strategy. And I, I realized as I got older that, that um, it held me in good stead. And, and one of the lessons I learned about any kind of war, and we are, as you know, Vic, well, well and truly in a war and have been for, for a long time, a, a spiritual war, a, a war of morals, a war of, and then ultimately a, a physical flesh war. 
um, between those that wish to keep us as slaves and 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 the few that wish to to um, change that. And that is that um, whenever you fight something and you make it um, a cohesive opposite to yourself, the more that you attack it, the more that you ultimately potentially strengthen it. I mean, this I is agree. the fallacy of anyone that's attempted uh, in history to to cause a genocide or or, or, or some kind of uh, elimination is that, um, from what I've read, almost no attempt of that has ever succeeded. If anything, it has been the catalyst for a much stronger opposition. The only strategy that seemed to have worked and worked an absolute treat in, in wiping things from the, from the face of the earth is consumption. That is, our positioning and consuming the enemy by establishing position where rather than opposing them, you uh, honour them and then consume them as a as a as a sub branch of a of a greater thing, yeah. Yes. Now that's the only strategy that that I have seen in war, or society, or or, or any form of, a, of of battle of ideas, that has ever worked. Uh, and it is um, uh, the the, the, the hallmark of the Jesuits and the hallmark of the Roman cult. And uh, certainly in the last 300 years, they've been exceptionally successful, even with quite um, poorly executed and, and poorly devised uh, strategies. They've been extremely, extremely successful. So that's the heart and purpose of, of what we're doing here. It, it is a consumption and a correction as opposed to a, a, a traditional, you know, good versus evil, you know, Team one versus team two type thing. Yeah. Now, um, what Gerald mentioned that we're doing at the moment, and not everything can happen at once, and, and everything needs a foundation. Um, I, I've had the patents of Eucadia, which is a, a, ser a series of seven documents that really are, are, are uh, unfortunately quite um, uh, quite full on in terms of the content, the detail, uh, and, and, and the time to get your head around it. But those seven patents have for some time described a model which describes the entire universe, how it came to being, why, without contradiction to present science, and even discoveries over the last 10 years have only validated further the, the UK model. But I, I've not pushed it. I've not sought to commercialise it. It's sat there and, and, and really people have read it, but without much, um, much momentum. But now we're at a point where we've realised that... Um, the heart of the system that uh, supports, protects, and nurtures the bar societies around the world that that have locked the courts into their own members is canon law. In fact, I said to Gerald, when you hear the word rule of law, and I'm sure you you know we, we talk about rule of law all the time, what we unwittingly do when we say rule of law, rule measure, bar, are all different words for canon. A canon is an ancient measure, an ancient rule, an ancient bar, yeah, an ancient reed, yeah. an ancient uh, measure of a carpenter. So what they've done is that they've effectively uh, monopolized the, the courts because they've monopolized the law. Uh, canon law, rule of law, uh, is their most precious and strongest claim of jurisdiction because it's through those 1,400, 1,500 canons that they establish their claim of uh, superior jurisdiction over all of us. And, and until we, um, and we can't, and this is the thing, I, I've been looking up until now on how to abrogate that. There is no way to abrogate canon law uh, other than to consume their system um, and, and demonstrate its deficiency and establish through canon law and effectively um, abrogate that what they've done then to simply uh, false claims. Now, I've sent to um, Charlie and I've sent to Gerald, and if I've got your email, I'll send you an update of how, how this is going. It's going extremely well. And we're in a position by next week to publish something in the order of about 6,000 canons, which finally 
and forever will eliminate